All right, so I'm not going to go over the every step of this one, um, but I'm going to show a couple different things just to kind of stuff to think about as you're doing it. Um, so this one is a little bit fancier than the stuff that we've dealt with before. Okay, so I have actually like little blips that go along the way, and then I have a little star blippy thing at the end, and then I have this little spirally thing that looks like it's wrapping itself around the pole. Okay. So just to cover how this whole thing was created, I'm going to hide all my layers and then just do this on a one by one basis. So the first thing that I did was this. Okay, now we've done that before. Remember our page transitions or whatever, how we just get that line just to go across. That's all that is. There's nothing fancy at all about how that one was created. Okay, then what I did was made these little bursts. Where do you have bursts? Okay, now this is the same way we created the other bursts, okay? Now the only difference is, instead of using a straight line and animating it, what I did was I used um, a circle and I kind of deformed it. So I drew a circle with the pen tool and then I, uh, where was number one at? Right there. And then I deformed it. So right here was my main shape. And I'm gonna uh, scale this out too, just so you can see what it looks like scaled out. Okay, so that's what it looked like originally when I drew it. So it's like really blobby um, and it came out like this and then it just kind of disappeared into that. Okay, now that didn't look really good to me having it that blobby so I just went into the scale and I just scaled it down. That way instead of having just that straight line, I would have something that has a little bit more shape to it as it's coming out and then receding into that um, vanishing point. And if I hide my guides, show guides, there it is. It looks like that. So it actually looks a little bit more interesting than if we were to have just those straight lines in there or just circles or just whatever, okay? Now another thing that I did a little bit differently was instead of um, doing 90 degrees, 45, um, zero degrees, and then negatives there, the bottom two lines are actually coming off the ground. So if you see, they're not a perfect rotation all the way to 90. So you don't have to always go perfect in increments you could offset them so that they're a little bit different. So if I wanted to, like this one, I could rotate that one to let's say 40 or 30 just to make it a little more apparent. And this will again give you a little bit different look than the original one had. Okay, so don't be afraid to go outside the box and try different things, to play around with these tools to see what it looks like when you don't have it go right at the edges. Now one of the reasons I didn't go right at the edge with this one is because I knew I was gonna have that bar there and if I did go right at the edges, it would look weird having it go right at the bar. So I had it come up a little bit off that bottom line. Okay, so I took that shape and then I just timed it out. So if I go to here, okay, so this is just me moving it, scaling it, rotating it so that, and uh, offsetting them so they would line up so that as this bar is coming across, that these um, pops would be kind of like in sync with where the bar is hitting. So it looks like the bar is coming across and making those sparks kind of fly. So that was the idea behind um, doing that. And you'll also notice that the bar doesn't start, like here's the bar of where it's at right here, but that one actually starts all the way over here. Okay, you can see how far apart these are. So a lot of this was playing around and just saying, I'm gonna put it here and then play it. Nope, it doesn't look good. I'm gonna offset another frame or two, try that, offset another frame or two, and keep playing with it until I found the right spot where this actually looks like the bar's um, hitting it and spraying those things out. Because it happens so fast, you have to kind of play with those settings to get it to work, all right? Okay, so that's all I did there. That's all, this is all so far stuff we've already done. Um, and then I added the circle. So I created this little circle like that. Now, originally I had three, okay, like this. Okay, and we've done that before too, but I thought three was too busy. I liked having just the one there. I thought one was a good number of blips to have here, but it was kind of boring. So what I did is I added the one circle. So now we have this. Okay, it's not terrible, it's just not as exciting as I want it to be. And then I took one of my bursts and I just rotated it and positioned it over there. So now if you look at it, 
I have a burst with that circle, and so it actually gives it a little bit more energy. Okay. All right, so that's all stuff so far that we've done. Everything at this point is stuff that we've done. Now for the spirally part. So the way I started the spirally part was I went with my pen tool and I just drew the path I wanted this to take. Okay, and again, don't worry about getting these things perfect every time. You do your best to get it as close as you can and then you're gonna come back and tweak it. All right, now I didn't want a fill here. I wanted just a stroke. So I turned the fill off. I turned the fill off. There you go. I didn't want my sound effects. I added a stroke to this. I cranked it up until it looked good. I went back and adjusted it. What one was that? Um, space couldn't. Oh, why did it work a second ago? It's not that. Oh, I have to let go. Um, so I'm clicking um, space um, shift and then letting go now. Come on. Oh, just Alt. Sometimes as you get comfortable with hotkeys, you forget what you're actually hitting. It's just like an automatic type thing. So it's Alt. There we go. We just have to tap it and then it'll do that. Yeah, alt. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I got this. You know, let's say that's good enough. I'll probably do a little more tweaking just to make these a little more even. Um, and then what I want to do is animate this thing coming onto screen, right? So, um, <clears throat> there's my shape layer. I'm gonna open the shape layer up. I'm gonna go to my add here. And remember we've done the, um, or I showed the trim path, okay? Where we can actually animate this path coming onto screen, like that, okay? So I'm gonna decide that I wanted to use the start. Originally I did the end, and I didn't like the way the end hit because I, my view is that my eye goes from left to right, and then all of a sudden I'm going left to right again, which is kind of weird, so I want to go right back to left. So I'm going to animate the start of this like this. Okay, so I'm going to start it at 100. I'm going to scoot up a little bit, a little bit more, just to give me some room. Set it to zero, and so now I should have that. Okay. Now I can adjust where these points are, so if I'm not happy with where it's hitting, I can adjust my timing. I think it's a little bit too late. Let's pull it back. And I think I also want it to come off that middle point, so I'm going to hit my path. And just adjust this a little bit. Maybe I'll just move the whole path down. Like that. That way it seems like it's coming right out of that middle point there. So now if we look at it, all right, so I can tweak that later. All right, so I adjust my path here. Oops. I set these to be easy ease. I go into this. I adjust that so that it happens, oops, sorry, the other way. Fast and then slow. Okay, so for now I'm satisfied with that. So now what I need to do is figure out a way to weave this in, right? I need to figure out some way to make it look like it's weaved inside of here. So the way that I did that was I created a copy of each item. So I copied the bar and I copied my squiggle, okay? So just so you can see this, let me scroll this guy down here to the bottom, all the way down. Okay, and I'm going to name this just so you can see it. So this is squiggle, and this is bar. Okay, so if I take my squiggle and I put it behind it, it looks like it's behind it. If I take my squiggle and put it in front of it, it looks like it's in front of it. So what I want to do is figure out a way that I could have the squiggle look like part of it's in front and part of it's behind. And the only way right now with what we know is to duplicate stuff. Okay, and I have copies, so that one copy is behind, one copy is in front, and it just looks like they're all lined up and all part of one big object. So that's what I did. I took this, and I duplicated my shape, and I'm just going to scoot this bar up here. Okay, so I have squiggle here, squig bar here, squiggle there, bar there. So what I'm going to do is just hide everything, and then just turn on what I need to focus on. So I need to focus on my squiggle and my bar. 
okay? Because I want this one to look like it's behind it, even though it's not behind it. Um, so, or sorry, I need it to look like it's in front of it, uh, but not the whole thing. So I need to take these pieces here and I need to cut those out of that shape. So like this piece should be cut out of here, this piece should be cut out, and that piece should be cut out. Now, if you remember from um, our first one that we did, we can go to the track mats here and I could say I need you to do a um, alpha mat for that one. And you can see how it cut out that bar right there, okay? So what it's doing is it's reading the transparency from this object and it's cutting it out of that. So if I went to this bar now and I drew extra shapes in here to help cut out more of it, then it would actually look like it's cutting out those shapes. So if I go to this, I'm gonna go to, not that, if I go to my shapes here and I just drew a box over that and a box over that and a box over that and I click off of this, there we go. So now what it looks like is that it looks like part of this is being cut out. Um, but let's take a look and see what it looks like with the other one on there. So I turn my other squiggle on and my other bar on and it still doesn't look like what we want. I'll move the bar up. Nope, it's still not looking like that. All right, so we have to do something a little bit different just by instead of just cutting it out. So let me hide these again. So if we look at this bar, come on. Um, what it's doing is if you look here, you can see that this is still cut out, this is still cut out. So I need a way to bring those areas back into it. So what I'm gonna do is not use an alpha because what an alpha is, is full on transparency. Okay, so it's reading this transparency and applying it to this. Well, I wanna do something different. I wanna say in this area I want transparency, in this area I don't. So I'm gonna use what's called a luma mat. Okay, and you'll see a luma mat is gonna give me something like this. So I get these like dots and dashes. So I'm gonna invert it, luma mat inverted. <clears throat> and what we're getting now is kind of like a halfway. So luma means brightness. It's using the brightness of my bar to control the brightness or the uh, transparency of this layer. My bar, if I just turn this on real quick, is like a pink. So it's actually very difficult to use that because even though it's bright to us, to the computer, it's not. So I'm gonna go to my bar shape. I'm gonna change my fills to completely white. And you'll see basically we get what we had before, okay? So right now, it's still doing what the alpha channel would do. It's making it completely transparent. But what I can do is go into some of these other ones like this, and I can make this completely black. Okay? So now, if you look at it, it looks like we have something spiraling around it. So my bar is completely black, and I have these white patches over these areas I want to be transparent. I'll turn this bar on so you can see what it looks like without the squiggle, and that's what it looks like. So the bar itself right here is completely black, and then I have a white box, white box, and white box where I want that to be transparent, okay? Turn that off, turn this back on. And now when I turn my bar on, oops, my bar on, there it is, you'll see that it looks like it's wrapping around this bar, and then just to fill in these extra areas, I could turn on the back squiggle and make sure it's actually behind it. There we go, okay? So it does take a little bit of maneuvering to get that to work, um, but you'll see I used four layers here in order for that whole thing to happen. One layer is strictly just to get those little bits of stuff to be transparent here and here and there. Other ways to do it too, but this way for me worked pretty good. So now we go boop, and it looks like it's wrapping around it even though it's not wrapping around it, okay? Now you don't have to do anything that fancy. This is just an example of stuff you can do just playing around with some of the stuff inside of After Effects. Okay, and the neat thing about this is I could then go through um, my squiggle here and I could add a little glow. Remember, we don't want to clutter it up. We just want it, you know, to look nice. But I go to Stylize Glow and I could drop on a glow on top of my squiggle. And then crank the radius up, crank the intensity up. Now I did make the mistake originally that I added the glow to both. So I can copy this glow, go to my other squiggle and paste that. And you'll see what I get is I get this weird blockiness happening. 
without the glow on this one, it still looks like the entire thing is glowing, even though it's actually not. These areas here do not really have a glow. It's just because of that, um, the alpha channels, that it's glowing. So, um, yeah. I mean, I could even try maybe on top to see. Probably not. No. So that works. It's sufficient enough to make it look like it's actually glowing. Okay. So that's just another neat way that we can incorporate blips into some of our animations. Now, um, someone asked the other day about our going beyond stuff. All right, as part of our assignment stuff, remember we have this going beyond, which is how you could go beyond on each assignment, okay? So this is like 10 points of your final grade could be going beyond things, all right? So a way that you could go beyond in the blips assignment is doing more blips. Doing more blips obviously would make go beyond and make sure you understand the stuff. Um, now if you do go beyond what you're doing on any assignment, make sure you have that foundation first. Make sure your first three blips are good before you try to go beyond, because if you haven't met the goals, there's no point in going beyond it, all right? The other thing you could do with something like this is you could add sound effects, right? Sound effects would be a neat way to, to enhance what this animation looks like. And there's no um, big secret in how you get um, sound effects. Um, most of the time, because there's not a great way to find them, like we have a library at the college on the other network, not on this one, but you can go through and find sound effects through that, um, or you can just look what you're looking for. So I, if I wanted like a blast um, sound effect, and obviously I want it free so that I can use it my stuff. Okay, so maybe I'll find, maybe if I turn my audio on, then I can find it. And turn it up so you guys can hear it. And if it played, then it would be great. Okay. But let's say that I liked one of these. I'm not sure why it's not playing. Um, I <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, that's really loud. <laughs> Try that again. All right. So we'll just click on it, and then we'll be able to hear it. Uh, the whoosh. Right, that's kind of like a weak whoosh. Um, tornado siren, shotgun blast. I don't know why it's not playing there. It's weird. Oh, that was the one I already played. All right, let's just grab any one for now just to see. Thunder is probably a good one. No, it's not. <laughs> or punch. That might be a good one. There we go. So we'll just say that that's a good sound effect. Now, it comes in three formats here. Uh, one is a WAV, one's an MP3, and then one is a zip. I guess just a zipped up file. I don't know why you download that one. Um, After Effects can use MP3s, it can use WAVs. The best thing to get is a WAV, though, because sometimes an MP3 will not work in After Effects. Okay, it's one of those random things where it's a hit or miss of whether or not it'll work. A WAV is an uncompressed version, so that's what we would want to use. So I'm going to save this to my desktop. Uh, and then I'm going to remember that for whatever reason this doesn't want to open uh, download files so I have to go to Chrome and then Chrome will be able to download this file which I should have just started in Chrome to start with there we go there we go so I'm going to save this file there it is show in folder all right so I'm going to go to my folder 2200 work blips I'm going to make a new folder called sounds and drop it in. And I'll even rename this um, without this number at the end. Punch. There we go. I want to make sure I know who it is, so if I need to give a credit, accrediting uh, stuff to them, I can. Basically, if you're going to put it online, you should do that. If you're just using it for your own fun, you really don't need to. All right, so I just drop it in, import it, however you want to get it into this area, into your project, there it is. And then we could just find a good spot. Here it is. And then try to hit, see where we want that to happen. So right 
there, I think, is probably a good spot right where this hits. So I'm going to scoot this over. I'm going to hit L to open up my levels. And then right where the peak is, right where this high spot is, that's where I want that to be in sync. And maybe even like a little bit before. All right, so let's see how that sounds. Pretty weak. <laughs> Right. And I think I maybe want to go over a frame. And this is how picky audio can be, is that sometimes just that frame will make everything sync up a bit better. Now it's like static or something. Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, now I could go into the levels, if I just hit L again, and I could crank that up. So now it'll be a little bit louder, okay? And then I could also go, there's some audio effects in here, audio effects, uh, bass and treble, make backwards, reverb, whatever, maybe, you know, adding an effect to this might, seems like it enhances it a little bit, okay? So we can play with this further, and in the class, we'll actually get into more audio editing stuff so that you can edit your audio beforehand. Um, I could actually find several audio clips, and every time there's a little burst happening, Doo, 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 doo. I could add those little burst audio effects in there too. Again, just like video, we don't want to clutter it with a bunch of audio. It should be there to enhance it, okay? So um, just keep that in mind as you're doing your stuff. You could have audio effects for like everything, like this thing coming out, whoosh, whoosh, all of these things, doo, 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 doo. and then you have the swooshy thing going woo, and that's just like way too much stuff going on. It just becomes too much, okay? So um, I'm gonna leave that where it is. And I'm going to save this. And then we're going to do the how do we want to put this together. So I'm just going to import my files. So I have my files in here for my other one. And just like before, we don't want to use our... Um, we don't want to use our files, our movies for each one. We want to actually use our actual files for them. So if you're making them all in one composition or one project, fine. You can leave them all in one project. Uh, but I created all mine separately, so I'm just going to import all my projects in there. So I know that here's my box blip. Okay, there was the Jesse box blip. And then this one here was an example of several different ones that we did. I think the bouncing ball one was the one we used. Number two. Okay, so that was the one we used. I'm just going to rename this to final and then this one was the final one here and you don't have to take them out of there you can leave them right where they're at and these ones are just random ones that I made okay so I don't need that okay so we just needed three so I'm gonna make a new composition 1920 by 1080 yes 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 we'll make this a little bit longer like 20 seconds. We'll do the same kind of thing we did before, a little intro to what it is, and then we'll go into what they are. Okay, So I'll start off with the shape. I'll take the stroke off because I don't need that. I'll start with a fill maybe like that. And I'm just going to move my pivot here and then just animate the scale of this. Oops. Come on pivot. There it is. Okay. And I could have just done a solid or two, but I just used the shape because it was there. So there's that. Pull this out. Set that to 100. <coughs> Easy ease. All the same stuff we've done before. Okay. So I'm not doing anything groundbreaking. This is all just the same stuff. A little speed on it. Nope, the other way. And you'll tell too, like after you do your stuff, you'll see if you like it or not. Okay, so I like the speed, I just think this is too slow. So I'm just going to crank these together. There we go. And I'll just do another one. Um, yeah. And then I'll just scoot it down. I'll change the color. And then I'll duplicate that one more time. Scoot it down, change the color. There we 
go. And I'll have a little box pop up in the center. And by the end of this, I don't know, by the end of the first eight weeks, you should have all of this stuff just down. Just all these shape creations and all these keyframe things. That should be your goal is to have these things just like ready to go. That's too small. Like that should be good. Put the pivot there. And I'm going to change the color of this to, let's say, a dark red. That. Okay, so do, do, do. There's my colors here. And then I'm just going to scale this upwards from zero to 100. Grab my keyframes. Easy ease, back to the graph. There we go. Okay, so we have this. And I think that could all happen just a little bit quicker. And you can see at no point am I trying to get this to be 100% accurate right away. It's always going to be you playing with it, looking at it, seeing what's working, seeing what you don't like, what you do like. And that could have waited just a hair longer. Like that. Okay. And then we'll have our text come in. And we'll make the font white so it's readable. I'll make it centered. If I can find my paragraph right there, make that bigger. I can even scoot it down some. It's not that. Um, I'll just use my arrow and scoot it down. And I could even scale it up this way. All right, that should be good there. Okay, and I'll do the same thing I did before. Move my pivot. Move my pivot. And then I'll just scale this up too. So I turn my settings there off. Scoot up a little bit. And then just scale this down. And this time I went backwards. I went from that to that. So I went from being large to being small. And then preview again. Let me set my marker. I think I want to switch that again. And the reason I don't want to do that is because it looks weird having it just kind of like slowly creep up and then jump. I want it to just quickly creep up and then do that. And then slow down. There we go. That's better. Okay, and I have a little bit of a delay, so I'm just going to scoot this thing back a touch. Still a bit more. There we go. All right, so that's good. So now I have my blips, and then I'm just going to make everything go away. So watch here how I can take that and just get rid of everything that I just did. Okay, so if I take my keyframes for scale and I copy them, okay. So you want to have this on screen long enough to obviously read it. I'm going to paste the keyframes. I'm going to right click on those two and I'm going to go to time reverse. So now what should happen is comes up, comes up, and then goes away. Okay, and then I can have everything basically just like collapse and hide away. So I'm going to do the same thing to all of these. I'm going to click these and copy them, paste them, time reverse. And then I'll grab these ones here, copy, paste. And these should all be the same, so I'm just going to copy paste all these. Copy paste, copy paste. And then I can grab all six of those at the same time and reverse them. And I just want to make sure they're scooted down far enough so that 
Um, I don't have any weird overlaps. And because this is like at the end, I can actually have this happen probably a bit quicker. Oops, too far. There we go. There we go. So now everything goes away. Okay, very quick in, out, we know what the title is. And then I'm just going to drop in my blips right after this. Okay, so let me cut all these layers because all these layers are not needed for the rest of this. So I'm just going to use Alt and then right bracket to cut all these layers. And there they are. So now I can go to my first one. Let's see. Comp 3, which was that. Oh, it's this one. All right. Uh, box flipping final. There it is. So here's blips goes away and then that pops in okay now obviously I don't want this to last forever so once I'm happy with this being on screen I cut it and then I can drop my next one in there here is the bar final one the one we just went through and again I wait till it's happy at the end and then I cut it and then I can go to my bouncing ball final, drop that in there, scoot it down. Wait till that's happy and then cut that one. And then I take my work area and cut that to the end. So now you'll see I have about 12 seconds of animation that I can go through and see. These are blips. There's that one. There's that one. You'll see the sound effect came in with it. And then that one came in too. Now obviously it's important too that all of these things that we created initially are all sized accordingly. So if one was like this big, one was this big, and one was like portrait, all of these different sizes coming into this one comp would not match right, okay? So all the stuff that we've done was 1920 by 1080 for our final comp, and the only thing we changed our size on to be smaller was all these little like um, effects that we did like that. That was just a small effect, so that was 512. This was a small effect, so that was 512 also. And then even though we're using these as, you know, these little neat things, you could also use a lot of these for like UI, for like user interface. So if you ever did a, uh, an animation where you were doing like Iron Man heads up screens and you had all these like funky things happening, you could use the same kind of thing to do that. So like the, what was the one I was just on? No. No, I want the spirally thing. Full circle? Comp it was compound, thank you. <laughs> um, so like stuff like this, you could have that as one of the indicators for like the interfaces loading, or you have a little icon over here doing that. So even though we're using this as a secondary animation thing, this totally could be used for other stuff too, okay? And then we could also make sure, the problem is when you get all these layers open. I have to go back to here, there, and comp three, which is my last one, yes. I'm gonna make sure I rename this to final blip comp, or blip comp final would be better. There we go, so I know exactly which one it is. Um, if I have any motion blur, obviously I would enable my motion blur and whatever turn my motion blur on. For this one, it shouldn't even matter because I don't really have any motion blur except for the startup spots here. Okay, but all those other layers I would have motion blur on, that automatically comes in when we enable that. So on my bouncing ball right here, as long as I've enabled motion blur on these, when I go back to my blip comp final, the bouncing ball would then have motion blur on it. Regardless of um, what's clicked on this, you'll see the motion blur still comes on because it's turned on in that composition, okay? So if you try to turn it on here, it won't work. You have to go to the other composition to do that. Okay, so then I would just go to File, go to Export, go to Add to Render Queue, click on Lossless, Lossless, yep. Always a quick time, always H.264. Um, for my audio rate, now that we're talking about audio, I'm just gonna hit OK for a second. This is the only audio I file I brought in. 
it has settings that it brought in. So 48,000 kilohertz at 16 bits. So when I go to here, I wanna make sure that my audio is 48,000, 16 bits, okay? You can, typically you can go down, right? So I could take this and I could make it, let's say uh, 22 or 32 or 16. The lower you go, the worse the audio, but the smaller your file size because you have less audio being there. Um, but you can never go up. Like I can't make this a better audio file just because I've set it to a higher setting. So never go above what that is. So 48 is probably gonna be fine when we have the one audio file in it. Um, 16 bit is how many samples is inside that piece of audio um, or how deep the samples are. And then this is how many speakers. Is it coming out of one speaker or two speakers? Stereo would be fine for this. And then there's more options in here we could play with eventually. For now, the defaults should be fine except for these two numbers, which you could obviously swap out. Hit OK, name this. So when we name our stuff, just remember we're naming it 200 work blips movie. So this is going to be called Sarcona blips underscore final. Okay, make sure your name's in it, make sure you know what the project is, and that's it. Okay, you're going to turn in your whole project folder and your movie onto this one that's called Billips Turnin. <laughs> Blips, there we go. Blips Turnin. So you'll drop your movie, project folder, everything right inside of this area, okay? So that'll be by the end of the day, Wednesday, you'll have that turned in. I'm probably gonna go over something new for like planning for the next day um, on Wednesday, just so that we know what to work on over the weekend, okay? Any questions?